for your permission. And here you go. OK, all right, let's get started. OK, yeah, OK, let's get started. Yes, yeah, so let's just to introduce ourselves uh, briefly. I'm Bill Emmett. Um, I'm an editor emeritus at The Economist, an author and chair of various things, including the International Institute for Strategic Studies, the Japan Society and others. Um, I call, and I live in Dublin, um, but also in Oxford. I straddle the two cities, perhaps partly to do with Brexit. Um, I keep my foot in both both camps. Let me ask Beryl to introduce himself. Bill is writing a book called A Tale of Two Cities. <laughs> okay, literally. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm in Ottawa, Canada, mm -hmm. the city that never wakes. <laughs> and uh, I was for many years a conciliary with, of, with Prime Minister Trudeau, Pierre mm -hmm. Elliott Trudeau. Mm -hmm. uh, did a variety of things uh, from, you know, the Quebec-Canada relationship. How you organize a federation, uh, foreign affairs, defense, economic policy, exiting from controls, etc. I a background which I try to forget about in merchant banking. Uh, had a consulting firm. My clients were the Rand Corporation, uh, the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, various governments. And uh, found I'm one of the found one of the founders. I'm a serial founder. I'm afraid of <laughs> the mm -hmm. North Forum, which brings together mm -hmm. leaders of from political, economic, and so societal sectors of Canada, Mexico, and the U.S. The creature of 9/11. How do we build a continental system that's resilient and uh, can make its way in the brave new world? Now. We face that situation again eh, as a result of the coronavirus. So the function of our commission is not to create a vaccine and not to deal with the medical issues, though it's part of our mandate. It's really to deal with the perfect storm we're in, uh, which forces us to have in mind all the variety of things that today are accented and they have to do with the balance between rights and artificial intelligence monitoring and surveillance. They have to do with the with these with the social charter. Uh, who deserves what? Uh, why are some people more vulnerable and less able to cope than others? It has to do with the health ecosystem. It has to do with the geopolitical stresses and where they might lead. So that is why we've put together a, we don't want to say a dream team, but really a group uh, able to work together of people who are thoughtful, experienced, wise, and properly diverse. Because we need the different perspectives and experiences to be brought to bear. So it's a global commission in the different senses of global. Uh, yesterday we were joined in the commission and I hope you too will be a colleague. Uh, Stephen Chu, for example, uh, the name probably rings a bell. Uh, Nobel laureate in physics uh, was secretary of energy. And that's interesting because one of the things we'll have to think about is should the public have confidence in science and modeling? And there, Chu was Secretary of Energy, and we'll need to think about the application of this set of issues to climate change. So our challenge is to be broad enough and yet focused enough to animate, enable a global informed discussion and ideally decision making. Uh, and to add, I mean, if I may chip in, I mean, to add to Beryl's excellent description, um, clearly each, each of us individually could have simply written, sat down and written our own essays on, uh, on uh, these issues um, and, you know, produce books or whatever um, to share ideas with an ungrateful world. But um, we felt that actually a more constructive and potentially influential method was, as 
Beryl says, to put together actually a wide range of, uh, of uh, interdisciplinary, highly talented skill sets from really the range of countries and, and, uh, and uh, generations too in the world who are going to be affected by this and put the minds together and then produce syntheses and uh, conclusions and communication out of what they think and what they, how they interact with one another. We felt that was a more exciting way to do things, but also a way that was likelier to have weight, authority and influence um, in global discussion. Um, and we do very much think it's very important to have um, high level representatives who A, have a great knowledge of the digital world, B, who are a bit younger than um, Beryl and myself, and C, to include very much Taiwan, because we think that uh, you have been absolutely a, a, a pioneer and uh, an important uh, exemplar of uh, reaction to uh, and the handling of the pandemic, but also I think in political, social and economic senses, there's a lot to learn as well from your experience and your perspectives. Hence our thought of talking to you and hoping to um, attract you to come and join our our group. Okay, and where do I sign? In a personal capacity. Okay, yes. where do I sign? Well, you sign absolutely digitally now. Ah, okay, okay, like um, air sign or whatever. <laughs> and three little lectures for your PhD. <laughs> I see, I see, okay. Um, yeah, I, I have uh, a couple of questions. So what, what's the output of this com commission? I mean, are we commissioned to do what exactly? Uh, is this an ongoing thing or does it just spawn uh, when we produce our first annual white paper or something? May, may I have a quick go? Uh, uh, Bill, of course, did this table. daily for well over a decade as editor of The Economist. But uh, we're not editorial writers, we're not writing leading articles, but we propose to have a variety of products. TED Talks, for example, uh, a report possibly delivered at Davos because we are funded backed by Swiss Ray, whose motto, whose tagline is, we work to build a resilient world. That's exactly what we want to do, help to build a resilient world. So there will be a, a, a coming out at Davos, there will be uh, webinars, there will be old fashioned publications, reports, and we will pay a lot of attention, you'll forgive me for saying this, to the web. And, uh, and we will have essays, conversations, webinars. We'll need to think through actually, together with members of the commission, what our product line and the timelines should be. So leaving it to Bill, I think the idea is that we would share with each commissioner, with you, a set of questions, draft questions. Here are the 18 questions, whatever the number is, we've drafted. Are they the right questions? Are we missing anything? Uh, and to have a discussion with each commissioner in the way we're talking now, but looking at these questions from a socioeconomic perspective, a socio-political perspective, the social contract, for example, uh, and uh, and uh, the geostrategic dimension, looking at those questions, then we'll have that conversation with each of the commissioners and then have over at least two days, because of all the time zones involved, a collective discussion with all the commissioners when we will work out what do we think are the appropriate product lines over which time period. Uh, we see this commission working for at least a year, probably more. Uh, ideally, the problems will have been resolved and gone away. But if they haven't, we'll remain in business and we'll do by doing. Uh, it's not a very precise uh, answer, but uh, as Aristotle observed, it's a sign of lack of civilization to demand more precision from a subject than it's capable of generating. 
right? Philosophy is not mathematics. So we're a work in progress and the commissioners will themselves help form what the timeline and product line should be. But it okay. will be in many respects digital. OK. So including the 48 hour discussion marathon thing, which I hope we can choose to sleep um, between those 48 hours. Sure. Well, well, maybe I was we were thinking, Bill, is this not right? Of one session of three hours or four hours, something like that, followed the next day, given we can't have a full day because of all the time time zones. We have to respect the fact that everybody on the commission is a busy person. And they can't be overly burdened. So we'll have something staged over several days to take into account people's uh, own private work plan, but also the time zones. Okay. So that will be the first meeting of the group. Mm -hmm. That anticipate in about a month. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. And I would agree absolutely with Beryl that this is a this is a flow, not a stock. We're not aiming to produce a 400 page report to sit on people's shelves to ca carry dust. We think most importantly that we don't know how long the pandemic and its consequences are going to last. So we don't know really what we're in the midst of. Um, and uh, it'll be an iterative process of, uh, to produce then a series of, of outputs which may well be a mixture also of outputs, some of which come from the whole of the commission and others of which particular members feel more comfortable in being involved with than others. So that it has to, it's, it's not meant to be a sort of lowest common denominator where every, all 25 people or so have to, have to be involved in everything. But uh, that is also got to be part of the conversation. So okay, next, yeah, next. okay. Okay, I, I see that. Uh, the other question is that, uh, so as I am just uh, checking my understanding, uh, as we contribute uh, into this shared uh, product uh, of the commission, um, so the commission will have its kind of positional position statements on things, uh, or a, as you said, something like a rough consensus, like a uh, committee's take. Uh, um, you know, the, the way forward uh, or backward as it may be um, and so on. Uh, but uh, what about um, kind of the, the values or the kind of founding values of the commission? How do you choose, um, aside from global diversity, which I heard about, um, the, the kind of people uh, who went into this commission? The, well, uh, thoughtful ref people. Mm -hmm wise, mm -hmm. acknowledged as legitimate, appreciated in their own societies. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not so much representatives mm -hmm. as individuals. How mm -hmm. do you choose them? Well, you know, it's life. Uh -huh. uh, it's so, for example, I have one of my daughters is a molecular biologist. Mm -hmm. She, in fact, uh, cha chaired a meeting in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. of, biologists a few years ago. Mm -hmm. I'm still looking forward to my first visit to Taiwan and one of the world's mm -hmm. great museums. Mm -hmm. As she, she told me about it, but she was the one who said, uh, there's this strange guy who is a professor of physics and also a professor of molecular and cellular physiology. Mm -hmm. She is a molecular biologist. His mm -hmm. name is Stephen Chu. He's a great guy. Call mm -hmm. him. So we did. How did that happen? Mm. It's it's uh, the Lord works in mysterious ways. Mm. She really does. Mm. OK, so, mm -hmm. so uh, one of the people who would be a colleague uh, mm. who talking to now is Amal al mm -hmm. Uh She was the speaker of the UAE parliament, mm -hmm. the only woman to have such a role anywhere in the Arab Muslim world. Mm -hmm. So it's it's but you need these perspectives given the range of issues we're going to have to deal with. So uh, we have got a playbook that set mm -hmm. out the values which mm -hmm. each member of the commission needs to tick off. Mm -hmm. But by the process of selecting and inviting people and their accepting, mm -hmm. 
it, 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 it emerges as non-problematic. We want to help build a resilient world. Uh, we're focused on questions more than answers at this stage. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what I hear is that, for yeah. example, um, Amal al kubaisi would not be billed as representing the Emirati uh, or, or all Arabs. like that. Or all Arabs, right? Yeah. This is not a kind of multilateral-ish sounding That's exactly uh, organization. But it's not, Audrey. Mm -hmm. It is exactly not that. It's mm -hmm. not institutional. It's not mm -hmm. partisan. Mm -hmm. uh, we are a group of individuals thinking together uh, mm -hmm. to build, to enable a more resilient world, mm -hmm. facing okay. challenges. Okay, yeah. that that's all I need to know. I'm I'm game. I so. I mean, I think that the sort of ba you know, there's a base assumption that uh, that we all have a world view that we have a basic a basic assumption that, that um, issues are global rather than national, um, or global as well as national, and that um, forms of global collaboration. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Tell, tell, so I'm delighted to welcome you aboard, right, Bill? Thank mm -hmm. Yeah. Delighted to welcome you aboard. Yeah, I, I just said on the record that I'm game. Um, so right. happy to uh, be part of this, um, whatever you call it, commission of individuals. Uh, it sounds like an oxymoron, but okay. <laughs> uh, right. uh, but then, uh, uh, of course, I understand that there's no physical travel uh, required in the first year. Uh, right. And all that's required is uh, digital participation on selected hours during a 48 hour period uh, and that uh, there will be uh, no monetary compensation of any kind uh, or, or with there that. Could be, there could be a modest honorarium for mm -hmm. there could be a modest honorarium mm -hmm. uh, for those able to accept it. Would I say modest? We were talking 10,000 euros, mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. I, we have to fix mm -hmm. this. If we have got to that kind of granular mm -hmm. detail. Not everybody yeah. would be comfortable mm -hmm. with a non -aurarium. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy uh, to, to uh, say that I'm able to receive honorarium in exchange for my um, kind of speaking hours, uh, as long as we do not make it like a regular job. Uh, right. Then as a public servant, I can uh, accept honorarium. But if it's um, a kind of permanent, like if I have to meet um, every week uh, or every uh, other week or so, that it becomes a kind of regular side job, uh, in which case I cannot accept honorarium and then I will also have to get uh, a premier's approval uh, as I did serving on the board of other international NGOs. So Audrey, Audrey, uh, that's why we're calling it an honorarium mm -hmm. rather than anything else. It is not a stipend, mm -hmm. it's not a mm -hmm. fee, it's not a, mm -hmm. it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's honoraria and we can't put a monetary value on the contribution mm -hmm. of, mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. uh, okay. that absurd. So that's why we call it an honoraria. It will be modest mm -hmm. and in recognition mm -hmm. of uh, the the effort people are putting in and the inestimable value they present, mm -hmm. all of that, all of that. Tell us very quickly. We have, if, we have found that uh, in our conversations that people haven't asked for anything. Yeah. That mm -hmm. They are wanting to take part. Yeah, um, uh, same here. I'm, I mean, I'm happy to uh, take part uh, pro bono. Uh, I'm just saying that if uh, this is anything that's um, kind of not a de facto honorarium, then I will have to tell you that I cannot take it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Perfect. Perfect. That's yeah. not that's not in question anyway. Mm -hmm. So uh, your ministerial responsibilities when you say your title is mm -hmm. Minister of Digital Ministry. Sorry. Uh, my title is digital yeah. minister yeah. yeah or the full title is digital minister in charge of social innovation open government and youth engagement all uh, yeah. right youth engagement also right yeah okay. yeah very good and fine well excellent well we will um welcome you as part as a member mm -hmm. uh, we're delighted uh mm -hmm. we will um share with you uh, the full list of all members once we have formed the commission. We're not exactly sure how big we're going to go because we need to get the diversity, but it'll mm -hmm. be something between 25 and 30 people, and we're at 20 now, mm -hmm. uh, including yourself. Mm -hmm. So, um, so uh, we, we will be quite. We will quite soon complete the group. 
and then we will also circulate the preliminary list of questions that Beryl mentioned uh, that will be the the ingredient for a first three-way and again three-way conversation which we'll have with each commissioner in order to um, get a sort of first clearing of minds clearing of thoughts mm -hmm. um, on uh, what the parameters are that we need to think about um, and then we'll take it from there and um, obviously shape the, pro the project uh, steadily as we go well, audrey this is i for me this is an excellent way to start the day mm -hmm. i gaining earning a new friend and member of the family it's great mm -hmm. thank you well, thank and you so I don't have anything after this, so this is the greatest way for me to um, close the business day, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> um, and yeah, I, I wish you um, a low code time uh, that is as good <laughs> as it can be in nowadays, uh, but good local time and uh, really looking forward to continued conversation. And if there are any kind of legal documents or any contracts uh, as part of this commission, please send it my way and I'll have it uh, checked uh, by our cabinet office. Okay, right now, uh, yeah, we're, is, we're going to be formality light. Mm. Yes, we are. We don't want to get in, get be burdensome to anyone. But mm. we, Bill, if I may, we will be legally organized as a not for profit based in Zurich, Switzerland under Swiss law. Mm. Okay, you can't be more nonpartisan than that. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. What about Mars? Okay. <laughs> yes. What about Mars? Exactly. But um, so we'll do that. And what is the best way, Audrey, to communicate with you? Is it through Zach? Mm -hmm. uh, you can email me directly. Uh, and actually, I think I uh, I share my email to you. Uh, but if I am to uh, join as an individual capacity, I'm sharing uh, with you uh, both my work email and my personal email. They are uh, very, uh, very similar to one another, easy to remember too. Um, and so that's that's my contact. And uh, um, if this is a not-for-profit in Switzerland, I believe our um, legal status uh, with Switzerland allows me to <laughs> serve as a member of a not-for-profit -for there, uh, but I still have to get a cabinet office uh, review. So the sooner we can get a legal document, the better. Okay, Great. very good, fully so understood. Audrey, uh, might you have a phone number as well? I'm sorry? I know this is very old fashioned, but do you yeah, have a, phone? a, a phone? mobile <laughs> number? Hmm? Okay. Um, yeah, I, I do not uh, have a mobile number that actually rings. Uh, it calls out, but it doesn't uh, reach me. Uh, but if you uh, need a number, of course, I have this number, but uh, it, it could be used, for example, on instant messaging or whatever. Um, but WhatsApp, I can, or FaceTime. Yeah, or, or things like that. Yes. Uh, I but it's, right. Right. But but it's um, like if you call this number, uh, I'll probably not uh, be aware of it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, we, we, you know, we can send a message to you uh, at, at odd but, hours. But, but, yeah. but I'm on Skype, so uh, it's actually easier if you find me on Skype. Great. Ah, okay, so we send you a message through Skype. Very good. That's right. That's right. Okay. Perfect. Brilliant. Well, have a great evening. Mm -hmm. and, a great uh, local time. Mm -hmm. We look forward to uh, to uh, carrying on this conversation. And thank you yeah. for the for live long, prosper. Okay. Prosper. Mm -hmm. Bye. Ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao. Thank you.